Today I will be showing you how to find the surface heat transfer coefficient for this fatigue testing specimen. This is the same specimen that I used in my modal analysis and for this analysis we will focus on the airflow properties around the specimen that determine the heat transfer coefficient. So this will use the density, velocity, dynamic viscosity, Prandtl number and thermal conductivity of air plus the characteristic length so it will be so it'll be 3 millimetres as we're working out the heat transfer coefficient at the centre of the specimen. These are the quite simple hand calculations used to work out the heat transfer coefficient. So first, you need to find the Reynolds number of the air at this characteristic length of 3 millimetres here. So simply use the density, the velocity, and the velocity is times by 0.85 as this is a factor which describes how much of the actual air flows around the cylinder. So we're only saying 85%. And then the dynamic viscosity and characteristic length. This Reynolds number is then put into this Nusselt number equation, which simply contains the Reynolds number and Prandtl number. Then you get a Nusselt value of the air. And then this is put into this equation, which is the Nusselt number times the thermal conductivity, times the diameter or characteristic length, and then you get a heat transfer coefficient at the surface at this location here. And this is the source where you get this Nusselt number equation from, as it's in the region between laminar and turbulent flow. So you have to use this equation. I will now show you how to do this in ANSYS. So you simply use a fluent analysis system this time. Then in Design Modeler, we use the same specimen as previously used for the modal analysis, but we now make a hollow box around the specimen. This is for the inlet and outlet of your airflow. The outlet should be far enough away from the specimen that there's no backflow of the air going back onto the, onto the specimen. The specimen now simply has to be meshed and named selections for the inlet, outlet and these areas here are named symmetry as ANSYSO knows what this means. So it knows as soon as you go into the actual fluent, it knows that this is an inlet, this is an outlet, and the symmetry here. So there's no change from here to here. It's all symmetrical. And ANSYS will know that automatically as you named it here. And then just specimen for the specimen here. Then simply body sizing and face sizing for the box and specimen. And then a simple tetrahedron mesh and this is what it looks like without the front face being hidden sadly it only lets you show the mesh with all the body so I can't hide this face while showing the mesh of the specimen inside but it will be very similar to this so now in fluent you turn the energy equation on and the viscous model to lamina The boundary conditions are already set here, and since you've named them correctly, they're automatically done. Only that the inlet velocity is now changed to 100 meters per second. And then all you have to simply do is apply a temperature to the specimen here. So here we're going for 50 degrees. And this is similar to what a specimen would experience when being tested. Then reference values are computed from the inlet. It is then initialized from the input as well. Calculation is then run with any number above a thousand or more iterations so that your residuals go down to a suitable value. 
Commonly, the residuals need to be below 1 times 10 to the minus 6. After the calculation is done, simply compute and save and display from wall flux fluxes the surface heat transfer coefficient for the specimen. So here are the surface heat transfer coefficients of the specimen computed from ANSYS. And you can see in the middle it's around about 500 and then here on the on the shoulders it's around about 300 to 350. Now if we compare this to our hand calculations, in the centre I got around 667, which is slightly more than what I got in ANSYS, which is 520 here, approximately. This is due to my relative lack of experience in Fluent compared to just mechanical and the limitation of the number of nodes I could use. So as it's shown, it gives a fairly good estimation. So you know you're in the right ballpark and a more experienced person with Fluent could probably get it to be around about exactly the same. And this is how you verify your surface heat transfer coefficient analysis on ANSYS using simple hand calculations.